allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Dolly, could you do roll call, please? Supervisor Flaherty. Here. Councilman Abbott. Here. Councilman Dean. Here. Councilwoman Cataldi. Present. Councilman Cahill. Here. Town Attorney Genesi. Present. All right. Next up, and I, I love seeing people in the boardroom. It's, I love it. Um, we missed you when we were shut down for uh, COVID. But uh, the next item up is if anybody uh, has something that they would like to go on the podium up to five minutes to talk about with the board. Um, now is the time. We were talking about before the beginning of the meeting, we got a couple of public hearings that are being uh, set tonight. And I, I just wanted to make sure that people understood that um, the public hearings that will be set tonight, that's when the public comes in and gives their opining on whether they're for or against the things on those public hearings. So with that being said, is anybody looking to get up on the podium tonight? No, I just question. I don't, I don't know if you're on the agenda, no, and that's the thing. If if you're on the agenda, Blaze, then you will. Oh, we'll get you up there, my friend. <laughs> this is for, and it runs the gamut. Open to the floor. It's open to the floor, and it's and it's on things that really aren't on the agenda. So, with that being said. So, at the appropriate time, I understand. Would it be now or before your discussion about the scheduling? Well, Andy, if you're going to be talking about the proposed cell tower at 833 Lake. There will be no discussion when we go to vote on those okay. resolutions. Gotcha. So I should speak now if I want to speak. Yes. That is true. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'll discuss the telltale. And Andy, if you could give your name and address. Yeah, Andy Opart, 820 Lake Road. So uh, just with respect to the idea of moving ahead and scheduling uh, in October public hearing for this matter. I think that may be just a teeny bit premature. Uh, I think there still are open questions that have not been addressed yet by Verizon. I don't think the town has had a chance to investigate some of these issues and I don't know how long the town, you know, at the, after the open uh, hearings will deliberate these issues, but I, I just want to throw these out just to make sure that they're out there. People are aware of these issues. Uh, one big issue, are local governments allowed to ignore or supersede New York state laws? I don't think so. I think the answer is no. Uh, hypothetically, if the state law prohibited placement of a cell tower within 2,000 feet of a scenic byway, could the local government choose to approve a cell tower that was 500 feet away from the scenic byway? I think the answer is probably no. So. We're talking about the scenic legislation, the scenic byway legislation New York State passed. Uh, I don't think that's been investigated a whole lot, uh, but New York State has put that out there. They've stated that the scenic byways, of which Lake Road is a designated scenic byway, uh, it's an important thing. Uh, and one of the primary reasons why it was designated as such is because of the scenic attributes of that road. Uh, having a cell tower less than a quarter mile from the road I think uh, has a significant impact on that. And I think that uh, going to that point, I think that Verizon, our friends at Blue Sky Towers and Verizon have not adequately discussed the, the options that are out there. They talked about one property or uh, two properties on Whiting Road owned by the same owner. They said, well, we sent them a letter. Didn't hear back, so we just completely dropped that location as a possibility. Now, I look at the owners of that location. They have uh, what I would call maybe foreign sounding names. I don't know what their comprehension of English is, but I don't think Verizon really did, with respect to that location, uh, appropriate due diligence in exploring that as an option. Uh, looking at the Pellet Road site, the Kiwanis Park site, uh, they discussed that, yes, we, that looked like a really viable option, but then they kind of just uh, perfunctorily said, nope, nope, we, we said it's, uh, it's too far away, so we're, it, we, uh, 
we, we dropped it. Now the engineers are saying it's, oh, it's, a, it's a more than a mile south of, that, uh, of the Lake Road site. But again, I went past there tonight, double, double checked my numbers and did an odometer reading and I took my watch and timed it in 30 miles an hour, 60 seconds it took me, less than 60 seconds to go between the two locations. And by my reckoning, that's less than half a mile. So I, if, among other things, I think that is a very viable site. And I think Verizon said, yeah, that's a viable site. And it's less than half a mile away, despite their papers uh, stating otherwise. I, I, I think they just very summarily rejected that site. I think, uh, and I understand it. I think Verizon and the attorneys for Verizon latched on to this site on Lake Road. They say, hey, this is what's easiest for us. This is what's best for us. Golly, we got somebody ready to take our rent money and it's gonna be easy access for us to build this thing. And I understand that. I mean, they, Verizon wants what's easiest for Verizon. And, and I fully understand that. But the responsibility of the town board, I think, is to make sure that Verizon uh, is taking into perspective, or that the town board is taking into perspective, the interests of everyone in the community apart from the interest of Verizon in building a cell tower. So I don't think there's really been proper due diligence as far as alternate site selection uh, by Verizon. And I think rushing ahead to an October hearing uh, might be a little bit premature. That's just my thought. Um, another second point, the impact of, besides the scenic byway issue, putting in a tower on Lake Road, uh, I, I looked at the valuation of the properties just on the north side of Lake Road, and we're looking at uh, almost $10 million, uh, you know, just between uh, Pellet and not even over to Whiting, $10 million of value. Uh, if you look at the literature about the impact of cell towers, an industrial tower, whether it be a crane or an oil derrick or a big cell tower, I think there's really not a lot of disputing that there's an uh, impairment to value of surrounding properties. The question might be, is it 15%, is it 5%, is it what's the exact number? I don't know uh, for sure, but some of the literature I've seen out there suggests anywhere from 5 to 10% impairment in value. Uh, you know, if you're taking 10% of $10 million, that's a million dollar hit to uh, local property owners. Maybe it's only 750000 I don't know. but. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't think that aspect has really been addressed. And again, I, I think the need for Verizon to demonstrate that they've really adequately pursued alternate locations for this tower, and I think there are certainly going to be a lot of other decent prospective sites. Maybe not the exact site that Verizon wants, maybe not the site that's the absolute easiest and cheapest for them, but again, I think, I think they need to demonstrate that they've exhausted other possibilities a little more than the very cursory manner in which they did in their, in their paperwork. So I would ask, to that end, I would ask the town board uh, to consider perhaps even 30 days delaying this open hearing, uh, the public hearing on this issue, asking Verizon to demonstrate exactly why is that Kiwanis site? You said it's uh, over a mile away. No, it's not. It's less than half a mile away from your proposed Lake Road site. You know, why is that not viable? And have you reached out to those people on Whiting Road, uh, just other than sending a letter and saying, hey, you didn't respond? Uh, are there other sites out there that could potentially be viable? I don't know, I think there could be, but I don't think Verizon has demonstrated that they've really pursued all the other options other than putting it right on Lake Road. If you're in New York City and, and you've got a, a waste management company who wants to put a landfill, well, sure, let's put it right on Midtown Manhattan, Central Park, all right? That's easiest for the waste hauler. Great spot, great accessible location. Well, I mean, folks in New York City don't do that because they realize that would be stupid to put a ugly eyesore right in the middle of a prime real estate area. So that's why the landfill is over on Staten Island, kind of way out of the way. Still workable for getting rid of trash in New York City, but they're not putting a landfill in the middle of the prime real estate in New York City. And I'm asking that we should think about other options other than putting this industrial tower right on a scenic byway uh, on one of the prime pieces of real estate in uh, the town of Webster. So to that end, again, I would ask consideration, maybe a little discussion amongst yourselves. Hey, can we put this off for 30 days even uh, to ask Verizon to demonstrate are there really no other options other than this Lake Road site? Okay. Thank you. And I just hit the end of the timer. and. 
Andy, because I'm sensitive to this, and I've been working with you and some of the other people on this, eight minutes and 12 seconds, everybody knows I'm a numbers guy, five minutes for that. I felt as though you needed to get that extra three minutes. But because we are on live stream and there's people in the room, for your older people, the Paul Harvey rest of the story, and I think it's we have to be measured on this, okay? Because if, if people in the room or on TV watching this are like, wow, this is, you know, Annie makes a lot of great points. Well, I want to make sure everybody understands, and I am a numbers guy. On July 15th, this town board did a procedural meeting to pass this cell tower on to the planning board for their vetting process. July 15th was two months ago, uh, almost to the day, all right? Um, Andy and several people from the neighborhood came in and voiced their, uh, it turned into a pseudo public hearing that night, and we allowed everybody to get up. Since then, I know Councilman Cahill has been absolutely tenacious on this from a vetting and standpoint of the town board over the last two months. Uh, Andy and some of the other people I have uh, communicated with that me as the town supervisor went out to all the houses within a half a mile of this proposed site. There were 40 houses. I went door to door and knocked on all of them, okay? I didn't knock on the doors that people already had come in here on July 15th because I knew that they were against the project. I needed to hear the totality of everybody that lived down there. The planning board, our engineering department, community development has been gathering all the due diligence documents on this proposed project through the scenic byway with the state, through the county, through all the government agencies <laughs> that have to opine on this, of which the file is now about this thick. I can assure you the town board and the town government is doing their due diligence. Now, I also sent an email out to Andy and to all the people that came in here on July 15th, on Friday, September 3rd, that spelled out exactly the time frame that we are setting up for this, including tonight, we are going to do the votes on setting a public hearing. October 7th would be the public hearing, and October 21st would be when we would vote on whether we are having this cell tower. October 21st, when we go to vote on that, in, I think my math is correct, is five weeks from now. So from the first time it was heard on July 15th until October 21st, I think Charlie is going to end up being, uh, is that three plus over, months? Over three months, sure. Now sure. I'm relatively new to this, Counselor. Mm -hmm. Time-wise, are we basically doing our due diligence and stretching it out to make sure we get in all the information. Okay, as far as uh, just to, and, and as counsel to the board, I'll just advise you, under section 95-12 of the Webster Town Code, it sets forth the standards that the town board is to consider in granting or not granting a special use permit to a cell tower. So it's right in there. All you have to do is look at that. I'd say all you have to do with it, it's fairly extensive and very detailed. 95 what? 12, 12. It's incumbent, obviously, on the applicant to satisfy everything that's in there as well. Right. So I think the burden is on them, and the, and the town board can do what it needs to do. So the, uh, the due diligence in terms of time, yeah, I think it's more, that's more than enough time because it's already gone through one process, the planning board process, which is fairly extensive. But it will go through another rather rigorous procedure again on the uh, on the 7th. And, and, and thanks, Charlie, because two of the resolutions tonight we're voting on, I just want to make sure, and I really appreciate, Andy, you getting up there, okay? But I think it's important for anybody in this room and anybody watching to know, I can speak for this town board. We do not mail it in. We are going to do the due diligence. We are going to overturn every stone we are going to cross every T and dot every I. And I can assure you, when we get here on October 21st for the vote, the five-member town board will be thoroughly briefed with all the documentation, all the visits to houses, all that you've done, John, all the things that are coming in from Verizon, all of that due diligence is going to be done. And I come from a background where I had to do a lot of due diligence. 
I'm pretty proud of the way this process is going. So, thank you, Andy. Um, next up, the September 2nd board minutes as submitted by Dolly, our town clerk. <coughs> I have reviewed them, and I make a motion that we approve them. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Okay, next up, I I don't know. Bill, were you? You were? Okay. Hey, um, point of order. Did you ask if anybody else in the audience wanted to speak? I think nobody else said they wanted to speak because Blaze found out that uh, yours is on here. Okay. And then nobody else had said, I want to go second. So are you, but hey. No, I just wanted to double check. Measure twice, cut once. There you was, go. I apologize. Was there anybody else that wanted to get up for the public uh, five minutes? Because Andy spoiled it for you because now I will <laughs> shut it down at five minutes. But I think everybody's set. All okay. right, beautiful. Thank you, sir. Oh. Ah. <clears throat> well, come on up. We're going to go, Dolly, we're going to, we, we'll go back to the five minutes. Uh, if you could give your name and Lori your address. Anderson. Lori Anderson, um, 810 Lake Road. Um, just to reiterate with what Andy said, um, the only two sites, I was here at the previous meeting when people spoke, and uh, the only two sites that were mentioned that were considered were the two sites that Andy mentioned. There were no other sites. Um, when Verizon was here, um, as Andy mentioned, they quickly dismissed the other two sites, um, one being too close, um, and the other one, as Andy said, they just didn't answer. And I don't think, that doesn't really impress me as to actually looking for another site. That's like, there's three options. One, eh, they didn't answer. The other one, sort of close. I haven't seen any paperwork. Um, it just doesn't sound like due diligence. It sounds like this is easy. And um, there's, there are a lot, of, a lot of things that are resting on this for, for some people in that specific area. Um, it's not gonna ever come down in our lifetime. So once you, you as a board makes this decision, and yes, you don't have to look at it, but the people that live across the street will, it's gonna make a major impact for a very small group of people. And that being what is in the community good is acceptable if that is really the only option. And I just think this has come across as being too easy. I'm not impressed. I apologize if that offends anyone here. Good. You don't have to apologize at all. Is there anybody else? And Andy, you owe her three minutes. <laughs> all right, then we're going to move on to Bill. I reviewed the bills this week and recommend that we pay them as submitted by the Director of Finance. Second. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. And I went through the prepaid warrants as submitted by the Director of Finance and I make a motion that we approve those. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. <coughs> All right, next up. Uh, I make a motion to set Thursday, October 21st at 7.30 p.m. here in the town boardroom as the public hearing date for the 2022 town budget. And this is to be published in the Wednesday, October 6th edition of the Webster Herald. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. 
and I got to stop and say that I've I've gotten a well not a law degree in the last uh, two ah. years from my friend Charlie. He's taught me a lot of Latin and all that. Charlie, you taught me that public hearings posted in published in the paper, no less than ten days, no more than twenty days, right? Correct. So October sixth edition of the paper for a public hearing on October twenty first is fifteen days. It was between the ten and the twenty, correct? I'm learning. Okay, the next two are, um, they're both related to what we've already uh, discussed a little bit tonight, the um, proposed, can't stress that word enough, proposed uh, cell tower at 833 Lake Road at the corner of Paladin Lake. Uh, I am making a motion to set a public hearing for a special permit Related to the proposed telecommunication tower, telecommunication tower at 833 Lake Road for 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, October 7th, here in the town board meeting room, to be published in the town newspaper, the, the Webster Herald, in the Wednesday, September 22nd edition. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman so, so. Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Okay, and the next one, which, like I said, these two public hearings are both attached to the proposed cell tower, but because the town board really has to make two, I don't want to call them mutually exclusive decisions, Charlie, but one is because... Assuming, well, I think the the second one is um, in the event that the permit is granted, they are seeking a, a, a tower 25 feet taller than our code requires, or right. I'm sorry, Long. permits, so that uh, a variance would have to be granted. Okay. And that is a variance that doesn't go through the Zoning Board of Appeals. It Correct. Has to be heard by by, the town by our town code, this this is one of the rare instances where uh, the town board actually right. hears a zone. And, and the same types of standards would apply. Right. But um, the town board is the one to make the decision yeah. on this one. And I mean, I think it shows the, uh, hmm, what do I want to say, the uh, wisdom of who wrote laws and codes is that this is serious enough of a situation that it hit, the buck stops here at the town board. Uh, it doesn't usually variances go through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Nothing against the Zoning Board of Appeals. The town board is higher on the org chart than the, town, than the Zoning Board of Appeals. With that, I hope that wasn't TMI for everybody, but uh, I'm making a motion to set a public hearing for a height variance for the proposed 125 foot tall communication tower at 833 Lake Road uh, at or about 745 or immediately after the end of the public hearing on the special permit on Thursday, October 7th in the town board <coughs> meeting room to be published in the Webster Herald's Wednesday, September 22nd edition. It's my motion. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Now, before we move on, because, you know, like I said, I appreciate the sensitivity of the issue. I'd like to think I've appreciated it since it first hit us on July 15th. Charlie, there has been precedent. I think in town that sometimes after a public hearing that same night that the, the town board has voted on the issue? Yes, you can vote on it the, that night or you can vote on it another night. The town board, uh, I think, was all in agreement that based on the, 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 the issue and the due diligence that is needed on it, we are not going to be voting on that on October 7th. We will be voting on that on October 21st to get an additional two weeks for the board to read up on all the documentation that is being supplied by the appropriate parties that need to show that. 
speaking of process, I think the next item on the agenda, am I looking over at uh, Rick and Art for this, or is this more looking at you, Paul? You should be sitting over there with us. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure if I have it right, but I think the 202B means that uh, the resolution to adopt the, the bond resolution is not subject to permissive referendum. So Charlie? Yes. Are, yeah, is that correct? Correct. So, according to our attorneys, we are to adopt this resolution. Uh, this 202B resolution prior to adopting the resolution to uh, to approve the bonding. So, just so I understand, um, under the Section 202B, uh, Charlie, that because subsequent to that resolution, we are talking about a uh, <laughs> a significant amount of money that the board is mm -hmm. considering to. Uh, bond and debt the town that it is subject to permissive referendum the bonding is yes okay which you can approve the pro well you can approve the project but obviously the bonding is a separate approval right and if i think if you have a super majority it is subject to permissive referendum if you don't have a super majority it's subject to mandatory referendum Supermajority meeting board in this one. board, it would be you'd have to have at least four members voting okay. in favor. All right. Do the board members have any questions or comments before we venture into the next two? Art, Rick, representing the leadership of the sewer uh, department here in town, any comments or? No, you know, I think uh, the town board has really uh, done a great job of uh, you know, having us in for the last 10. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had, used the Joe DiMaggio hitting it, streak for it, all of my life. Absolutely, hope I didn't it, it is a big wasn't number. Alive for it. It, it, it is a big number. And uh, uh, we've had uh, Barton Lajunas in, and uh, we've been working, at, working towards this goal uh, really for since 2016. Yes. A absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Well, I think and I mean, it'll, it'll be good June, for the town. Sorry. It'll be good for the town uh, in the long run to get everything repaired and upgraded. Uh, it'll really create some opportunities uh, for the town. Well, I think since uh, Thursday, June twenty fourth, um, it was almost three months ago. Every town board meeting and every town board workshop has either focused on this project or had as one of the topic items this project. And I think it, it necessitated that type of um, attention by the town board because as, um, as we've tried to, you know, communicate out to the, the town, it, I, I, and Barry, you, you've been involved working for the town, being the government of the town for 50 years, correct? Yes because you were seven when you came to work. Yes. Um, it's the largest dollar amount project ever. I don't remember one bigger. Yeah, so. Okay, well with that in mind, uh, I'm making a motion to approve the Wastewater Pollution Control Facility Asset Renewal Project and Water Resources Recover Facility Improvements Project under Section 202B. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Okay. So, Charlie, if, I think if I understand what you just said, since that was a five person vote, now it's subject for permissive referendum. As long as it's four to one or five to oh, zero. No, the bonding is subject to permissive Sorry. referendum. You, you approved a project, but the question is now the cost of the project. The cost of the project is a lot of money. Okay. So, okay. So now, the next motion I'm making is to approve the bonding up to a maximum cost of $30,998,000 for 
for the Wastewater Pollution Control Facility Asset Renewal Project and Water Resources Recovery Facility Improvements Project. Is that your motion? That is my motion. Second. Supervisor Clarity? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. I don't blame you, Bill, for your voice cracking, because every time I look at it, I just, you know. Um, so, if I understand correctly, Charlie, that tonight being September 16th, uh, the, the citizens of the town in a, in a representative republic have voted on their representation to this town board. They entrust us to make fiduciary proper decisions for the community as a whole. However, once again, the foresight of government checks and balances, if a, if a certain percentage of town people uh, rise up in the next 30 days and submit a petition, submit a petition, it could force a referendum on this project. That's that correct. Then the whole town's citizenship or registered voters would, would vote. That's out. correct. Okay. It's a good check and balance. Okay. As I said when I was over at Rick and Art's uh, sewer plant, uh, well, it's not your sewer plant, but when I was over at your offices today, um, uh, what, what, it's, not the, it's not the beginning of the end on this, it's the end of the beginning, <laughs> per se. Who said that, by the way? I don't know. Was that Roosevelt or Churchill? Churchill. Churchill, Churchill. sorry, okay. Maybe I shouldn't make the analogy to a war, but uh, but the sewer project will continue to dominate a lot of board meetings over the next three to six months. There's there's a lot still to do, and I can't stress enough. And I, I when I was reading the resolution, I focused and I really hit on the words up to a maximum thirty million. Um, the next step is is it the WIA grant process? Um, and then there are just so many other opportunities for us to go out and get state, federal money to offset the cost of this so that we don't have to indebt the town citizens for the full $31 million. And we will do everything in our power to maximize those. So. <clears throat> All right. Um, now the next one, Mary, would you, uh, Pat is not here, right? I, I never can tell. He's not behind the post. He's no. not behind the post. <laughs> would you like to kind of go over this? Yeah, so um, Pat and I have been working together, putting together um, an RFP for um, a feasibility study and conceptual plan for the new highway facility. Um, so it's kind of step one. Um, I think we're going to do that first and then um, go back out for RFP to do the actual design services, but this will give us a better idea of what the budget is to get what they need and how to lay it out on the site that they have. So um, kind of do lay the groundwork and then be able to get a better detailed RFP out for the actual design services of the project. You guys have any site visits to other highway garages that have been built in the last five years? They've done several. Several? Okay. Yeah, I know there's a lot of notes. There's a big binder that um, Joe Herps had put together, putting um, notes together on what's needed, and I think Pat's followed through on doing more research. So. Great. Good question, Jeff. Um, <laughs> I looked down here. I mean, Barry, you could probably go on for hours since you know that highway garage or current one better than any of us. I could. You could. I'm not going to. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Bill, I mean, any comments or questions about what part of the process this is for Highway Garage? No, I'm good. Yeah. Patty? I have no questions. It's step 1A. It is step 1A. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it, it's, it's, it's the reality of, uh, I guess, 
uh, seven year old building. That, thank you, Bill. 50. Is that we have infrastructure in the town that was built back in the 60s, and uh, it's it's kind of all reaching its uh, aged out point at the same time. You need to see the sketch of the original design of that highway garage to appreciate what's actually been done. Um, it's hanging on the wall in the in the office at the highway, and uh, they they've done everything since the day it was open to improve it, to maintain it, to enlarge it, to utilize the space available. Um, you know, and it's a concrete structure that houses a lot of salt trucks. Yeah. Salt and concrete don't work real well together, and they've done everything they can do to, to keep it up, and uh, it's time for a new one. Yeah. At least to start planning for a new one. Right. Okay. Um, well, Patty, you're the liaison to that department. Do you want I'll make to a motion that yeah. we solicit written proposals for architectural and engineering services for the construction of a new highway facility in the town of Webster to be advertised in the Webster Herald on September 22nd, 2021. Do we have to include the date we're going to open those? It's not um, it, it's not It'll a It'll be on the bit. legal notice okay. um, that Dolly. goes out. So it's, um, I think it's October 8th. It's the Friday before Columbus Day weekend. Dolly just commented it's not a formal bid, so that's not necessary. Well, it's not a formal bid. It's not a sealed, sealed bid. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, right. Great. Yep. So that's my motion. Second. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say, since Patty, you are the liaison to the highway department. Um, Deputy Supervisor Cataldi is also the liaison to the sewer department. And Rick and Art, I think you can attest to this fact, she gets over there and she checks out things. She is <laughs> great. I'll, I'll be back there tomorrow because they're paving. With boots, yes. Yeah. Don't forget your boots. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the picture I saw the other day of you just standing over that, what was it, a lateral uh, that you were digging in, whatever? I, I can't even guess on how deep they were digging and it, how much dirt they moved to get into it. It was incredible. Yeah, that picture should yeah. be framed, by the way. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Uh, the next item up, actually, Mary, this is, <laughs> and we're not even tabling this. Uh, this just, they no longer... <coughs> right, yep, the project has changed and they don't need fill, so that's okay. dropping off the agenda. So, Charlie, I mean, that's just that, right? There's no, we're not tailing, we're not. No, you're just nothing, nothing's it's been to withdrawn to decide. Withdrawn. Number nine, so. Okie dokie. Um, Blaze, is this yours? <laughs> All right. Well, the next item, and Please, if you'd like to take the podium, uh, uh, this is a, um, a proposal for a fill permit at 950 Shoemaker Road. And Blaze, you can give your name and address. Yes, Blaze Midnight, 950 Shoemaker Road, obviously in Webster. <laughs> um, yeah, I know some of you guys probably remember my dad, who probably spent a lot of time right here at some of the board meetings. <laughs> so it's my turn to take up the, the torch. Anyway, this should be pretty quick because in my mind, it's pretty straightforward. I'm looking to fill in a small area. Uh, I have a barnyard with a flat area, and then the hill tapers off at one end. I want to expand it a little bit so I have more maneuverability with trailers and vehicles. Um, so I have a 20 foot by 20 foot area that I want to build a retaining wall around. So at the one end, it'll be at grade level. At the other end, it'll be four feet deep. It tapers down 20 feet wide, 20 feet out. Um, my nearest neighbor is probably six to 700 feet away through a heavily wooded area and on the other side of my barn, so I don't think they can even see it if they wanted to, if they had a clear view, which they do not. I'm far away from my property line. I am not obstructing any kind of water or drainage or anything like that. 
Um, it seems pretty straightforward. I don't see how it's going to be a problem to any neighbor who would even know it was there, even when it was there. So um, I'm asking to get a permit to have that filled in, and uh, that's about it. It's pretty uh, pretty easy. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I do have some photos if anyone wants to see them. I think we have. Mm -hmm. Yes, we and, do. Uh, okay. Mary, I know you have a letter in the packet that is endorsing it. Yes. So, thank you, Mary. Any questions or no? No, any questions, Mary would be asking them, and uh, Superintendent of Highways would be uh, also addressing it. If there's no questions from them, then there's no question. I might, I do have a question. It says 30 cubic yards. Uh, that's what I kind of did in my calculations, yeah. I didn't know that 30 or required no, I forgot what I yards. came up with. Did I say 30? Is that what's on the permit? That's what's on here, yeah. Well, it's 20 feet wide, 20 feet deep, and it goes from zero grade to four feet deep. So I guess I multiplied four by 20 by 20 and divide it in half, figuring it's sort of a half of a cube. And that's, 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 that's not a lot of fill. It's not a what? It's not, not a lot of fill. No, it's very, no, it's, it's relatively very small. small. Yeah. Yeah. Truck loads. <clears throat> Two truckloads. Yeah. I mean, uh, the town filled in my pool. It probably took more than that. So. Okay. Well, then I make a motion to approve a fill permit for 950 Shoemaker Road. Second. Supervisor Flaherty. Aye. Councilman Dean. Aye. Councilman Abbott. Aye. Councilman Cahill. Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi. Aye. Wait, well, I got to ask you one thing. Did you say that your neighbor was 6,700 feet away from you? No, six, six or seven. Six or seven, because I was like, that's a very specific number, 6,700 feet. I mean, that's uh, 600 not so specific. That, <laughs> 600 to 700, that makes yeah. more sense. Am I, it's like, yeah, um, a couple hundred yards away. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. You laugh just like your father. Um. Hey, Judge, will you regale us? Just here to answer questions. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think I know a little bit about uh, the JCAP, the Ju uh, Ju Justice Court Assistant Program. If memory serves me, it's up to 35000 And you, you like this green, though, green. You like to talk about it. You're, you're going to have to get out there, Justin. <laughs> so, David Coratori, Webster Town Judge, one of two, with Judge DeSalvo. This is an annual, we have an opportunity to apply for money from the state, or as I like to say, money back from the state, um, and uh, which we'd like to do. And uh, in order to do that, you need both a town board resolution that you have to send in a copy of the minutes, and you also need the supervisor's signature. Well, the game plan is to get chairs to replace those that we got for free from the Hall of Justice many years ago with the help of the highway department uh, moving them, and uh, they are coming apart, and it's time to figure out an alternative. And these... Uh, Chairs that are nothing like a recliner are uh, about the same kind of thing that we're looking at. Okay. Someday we'd like to uh, use the JCAP for more of a building expansion of the court, but a little bit every day, a little bit every year is kind of what we're doing. Last year we received uh, the intercom so we could, during COVID, call over to the other. Uh, room to have another 10 people come come over and uh, frankly I forget what else we there was something else that we received as well hey, what's the maximum of the grant? I, it could be something like 30,000 bucks but it's uh, it tends to be for towns that are currently using the bumper of the one fire truck kind of thing and they want to kind of increase it a bit. Right. 
or at a secondary salt barn or something or other. <laughs> He's regaling us. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm telling you how it is. <laughs> um, we got a salt barn. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> hey, we're not, not going to hey, have to there. We get that. Um, so, <laughs> any questions or comments from the board on this? No, none. Okay. Uh, the only do you know like when what is the deadline to apply for yeah it, it, it's like October 1 or okay. something I mean it's uh, Marilyn is my guru of the grants the JCAP and uh, gotcha that's where we're on it because if you don't get on it you don't get it gotcha well in that case I make a motion to authorize the submission of the 2021 2022 Justice Court Assistant Program called JCAP Application by the Webster Town Court for a request up to the maximum amount available under the grant. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Thank you all. Thanks, Judge. <coughs> Thank you. All right, and the last item of our formal agenda tonight is um, a resolution to declare the following items for destruction from the police department. Uh, a Dell laptop, asset tag number 04169, a Canon printer, asset tag number 02770, and a vigilant plate reader cameras number 05678. Barry, are you familiar with these? I know mm -hmm. these are old. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing that's hard to understand is probably the, the plate reader. That's what yeah. the, that's the attachment on the cars when they drive by. They kind of see your plate and identify who you are. Or go through the parking lots. Or well, believe, it, believe it or not, as they pass you by at 60 miles an hour. Amazing. Well, that's my motion to declare those. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. All right. Well... Um, we'll take our five minutes and see if anybody, I gotta take this off, right? Do not disturb. See if anybody calls in. And why we are doing that, uh, we kind of go around uh, at least the town department heads and the town board uh, members for uh, any last comments uh, from Rick and Art from the sewer department? Yeah, just, you know, we keep talking about. 31 million, um, we have to realize 20 million of that has to be done anyway. So that's something that's been talked about for what, three, four years now? Since 2016. Since 2016. And that price tag doesn't get any cheaper either as we move along. The 11 million that we've collaboratively added to it um, is innovative technology that will help pay for itself, the 11, and actually help pay for the 18 or 20 million. So if we didn't add that on, the burden will be a little heavier. So kind of. Just that they're two separate, but they're joint projects. Mary, um, we've uh, we've started the ash tree RFP process. Um, so we did do a walkthrough last week. So it was interesting seeing uh, the different locations in the park districts. Um, so we have a couple interested bidders that went on the site <coughs> walkthrough, and then perhaps we'll get a few more. Um, but those will be in next Friday, so then we should start seeing those getting addressed um, in the next few weeks. So Great. Paul? Uh, as Tom mentioned earlier, the, uh, the full 2022 preliminary budget will appear in the Webster today, which will be coming out on October 6th. And it'll be followed up with the public hearing on the 21st of October. Yep. The vote on the budget is scheduled for November 4th, if all goes well. Good feeling it will. John? I'm good. I missed you. Missed you, buddy. Barry? I'd love to talk for hours about the high rate grant. Yes, you but would. I'm going I mean, to. You know, <laughs> if we have plans for you after December 31st. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm retired as yeah. of December 31st. <laughs> like I said, we have plans for you. Okay. Uh, Bill? So, so does Audrey. Uh, I was going to say, I'll give you my wife's cell phone. I was going to say, <laughs> you better hold your breath after December 31st for any plans from Barry. 
Well, I'm not going to jump on them January 1st, but I'll let them go through a couple months before. You know, we could use some help on this project, Barry. Okay. <laughs> Bill? We're good. Good? Patty? I'm good. Any other places at the sewer department you're visiting this week? Uh, Just tomorrow for paving. Okay. You think that's a big excavation? You should see what a really big excavation no, is. No, I, I realize that, but to replace a lateral, I was it, it was surprising on how much they had to go down and dig it and the camera and all of that stuff. Well, no, I I mean I've seen the bigger excavations. That, that's part of that was part of the problem to begin with, correct? Otherwise, it was 13 feet deep, over 100 feet long, flowing the wrong way. Flowing the wrong way, old and oh well. The picture, Patty, you look tiny. <laughs> next I love to that, that picture. <laughs> She's tiny. I mean, really, it looks like you're looking down over the Grand Canyon, kind of. So. Well, and it wasn't that deep. <laughs> I know, but it, 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 it looked big. Um, Charlie? We're busy, but uh, of course, attorney client privilege for busy to get into much detail, so nothing. Any Latin thing you can say, or uh... <laughs> and this is your time of year, Dolly. The town clerk's office is very busy collecting school taxes. Is it? You know, I I actually had the pleasure to have lunch today with uh, Brian Neenan, the uh, uh, interim school superintendent. Very nice man, and I told him I said, you know, it's gone knock on wood, kind of without uh, much. Uh, Issues. Uh, a lot of people coming into town all paying their school taxes, and um, it's going well. we were just a little concerned after seeing back in the spring some of these national school board meetings that kind of went off the rails. Like, you know, but it seems with the kids back in school, people are a little happy. Has anybody been to your office yet to complain about how high their taxes are while they're paying your school taxes? To my office? Yeah. Uh, to my office? To uh, no, that's I that's a relative, relatively, yes. that's a, it, it's a, a pretty, normal yes. circumstance. Yes. I mean, hey. I like, school taxes. I, uh, anyway, well, with that being said, <laughs> um, I'm not going to get myself in trouble here, Barry. Um, that concludes tonight's meeting. This meeting is officially adjourned. <laughs>